Hi, I'm Anthony McKee and I'm a Melbourne-based professional photographer. Data storage is becoming quite a concern for photographers nowadays, particularly as manufacturers keep putting more megapixels onto our camera sensors and giving us larger memory cards to play with. It's not unusual now for photographers to capture 10, even 100 gigabytes worth of photographs and videos in the space of a day. Looking after that data is becoming quite a concern. Until now, most photographers have been using a device like this to store their photographs. This is an external hard drive. The problem is, it's not that efficient when it comes to storing data. The problem is we buy one drive, and soon afterwards we realise that actually we should be buying another drive to back this drive up. So actually we're getting about 50% efficiency out of our storage. Some photographers even buy a third drive, which gives us about 33% efficiency. Of course, as we fill those drives up, then we go and buy another hard drive, and another hard drive, of course, you go and buy another drive to back those up, and more drives, and the process becomes rather tedious, particularly when you realise that each of these devices has its own power supply, each has often has a unique cord to connect you to the computer, and when it comes to finding old photographs down the track, there's the process of wondering which drive it was on, where's the cords, will that interface still connect to your computer? It's a bit of a conundrum, particularly when you realise that an external hard drive is actually just a glorified casing for this device, the actual hard drive. This is a very common part, and it can be sold without the beautiful casing. And that's why recently I've been changing the way I actually store my photographs. Rather than buying external hard drives, I've gone to using a disk station. It's a device that effectively manages your hard drives for you. The disk station I am using is called a Synology DS1515+. Plus. It's what they call a Network Attached Storage Device, or NAS. It has five bays along the front of it, in which you can put five hard disk drives. Each disk drive can be up to 6 terabytes in size, and so that means in the one place you can have up to 30 terabytes of storage. It has one common power supply, it connects to your home network using an Ethernet cable, and the fun part about it is it has a built-in computer that is constantly monitoring and managing your data. Setting up a Synology disk station is not quite as easy as connecting an external drive to your computer, but if you can do internet banking and use Adobe Lightroom, then it is still reasonably straightforward. The first step is to install hard disk drives into the disk station. These drives are available from most computer stores. The next steps involve plugging in power, and then connecting the disk station to your home internet router using an Ethernet cable. The disk station is now ready to be accessed by any computer in your home network. Go to your computer, open a web browser, and type into the address bar find.synology.com. Your computer will find the disk station on your network and take you to the setup pages. Create a name for the server, preferably something that is a little obscure so that it does not grab too much attention to itself. Then create a username for yourself and a password. Make sure this password is strong and difficult to guess. Next you will be asked to set up a Synology Quick Connect ID. This is useful if you want to be able to access your disk station from beyond your home network. Again, make sure the Quick Connect ID is relatively bland and make sure that you use a strong password. Now having set up the admin settings in the Quick Connect ID, the next task is to tell the disk station, how you want it to manage data. This is best done when you have a hard disk in each bay. This might sound like a sales pitch from a hard drive manufacturer, but if you have a look at the RAID calculator on the Synology website, you will discover what I mean. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, and it is a system that ensures that if one hard drive in your server fails, all your information and photographs are still protected. With just two hard drives, you get about the same level of protection as you would if you had two external hard drives backing each other up. But as you add more hard drives, the level of storage efficiency goes up. Using Synology's hybrid RAID technology with a five bay disk station, you get 80% storage efficiency, and yet your photos and data are always protected in the event of a disk failure. To set up the storage, go to the disk station manager's homepage and then click on the main menu in the top left corner. From there, click on the Storage Manager. On the left you will find a label called Disk Group. Click this. You will find it is empty. But then click on Create to create the disk group. You can choose whether you use two, three, or even all the disks to create a disk group. 
On my disk station, I have set up two 3TB drives to mirror each other, to constantly back up my computer and look after a couple of security cameras about the property. And then I have also set up three 4TB drives using Synology Hybrid RAID to give me 8TB of archive storage. Having established our disk groups, we need to create volumes. This defines how the storage on each disk group is divided up for use. Within the Storage Manager, go to Volume and then click on Create. Choose whether you want a single volume on one disk or multiple volumes. A single volume is fine if you are the only user using the disk group, but if you are sharing the disk group with others, it is worthwhile defining how much space each person or application gets on your drive. You don't want to set up a disk station at home only to have your 14 year old monopolize the most of the storage within the first month. Now finally, having created the volumes, the last task is to go to the control panel and create some shared folders. This is where you finally get to create the names that will appear on each storage destination in your browser. Create a name for your shared folder and then in location, decide the volume that you want this shared folder to live in. In the next dialog box, you will be asked who can access this shared folder. Once you've set up the disk station, the next step is to copy your photographs, videos, music and other files across onto the disk station. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can look for the server on your computer's finder and then drag and drop files across. But another way is to actually use the Synology's disk station manager. I mentioned before that the Synology disk station is a network attached storage device or NAS. This might sound intimidating, but what it means is that you can effectively put the disk station anywhere in your home or business where you have another Ethernet cable. You don't actually have to have the device sitting right next to your desk. I've got my device sitting under some stairs, but you can put it in a cupboard, a spare room, even your garage. Another advantage in network attached storage though, is that you can access your photographs and information from anywhere you have an internet connection. This might be your local library or somewhere on the other side of the world. It's useful for looking and downloading your photographs, but it's also particularly useful if you're traveling and you want to upload your hero photos back to your home server, just for safety's sake. What this means is later on in your journeys, if your computer gets stolen or some memory gets corrupted, at least your hero photographs are safe. And as a photographer, that's kind of useful. Now the Synology disk station is not going to be for everybody, but if you're capturing more photos and video than you ever have before, and you're wondering how you're going to manage this content, it is a worthwhile solution, particularly if you like a bit of efficiency in your life. I'm Anthony McKee. Thanks for your time.